you're not in Zoom, so we're going to have to try to. Uh, not for the moment. I, I will. I will come up to speed. Uh, I, I'll, I'll That's it. To, That's yeah. it. So I'm going to try to bring you up to speed. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. okay? But okay. you're. You, let Let's take a an image of a pencil, for example. Okay. I got this pencil in front of me. So if the pencil is like a cylinder, and that's what we call the Zeron pen, if you've seen some of my drawings. So you see that there's a lot of action inside of that. Now, we haven't spent uh, about a lot of time, we haven't spent any time, talking about the Kavonos of Davani. So this is what this is, because inside of the pencil comes to a point. When we come to that point, that's the place where the Kavonos come in. Because if you could, it's usually at the end of an understanding of what's going on in the Eitz Chaim or the uh, of the Rav, who he's trying to teach us, Rabbi Shimon, uh, that we come to Kavanos. Because Kavanos is strictly about praying. So it's just about that. Now here in the piece that we have today, I'm trying to find an opening so that we can make this digestible. And we are going to use the format where I'm going to read the Rav and then I'm going to read the Tiv. But the light print and the tiv and the rab up above to try to help us. Some of these in Yanam are very short, but most of them have a little a little bit of a rechus to them. So uh, uh, so that's that's the style that we want to use there. Now what else did I wanted to tell you? Okay, so we got dropped into this situation where we're talking about Leah. So what is Leah? Leah is one of the wives of Yaakov, right? So Yaakov has different kinds of names. He could be called Teferis. He could, well, sometimes it's Zeranpin. Uh, he grows, he gets, he's in a different, different, different positions. His main mate, his mate is Rachel. So that's the woman he married. That's the woman he wanted to marry. But he married her sister first, so she's on the top. So the sister, the system, if you imagine your own self, so we'll do it like this without drawings. We'll try to describe it is in the back of your neck, there's where your tefillin, the knot of your tefillin is, that's approximately the position of the head of Rachel. I just said that wrong. The head of Leah. Leah goes from that position. She was from the Chazel Lamal. Lamal, that's right. She's from the, she, so we could also say from the Chazel Lamal, that's right. And Rachel is from the Chazel Lamal. So it turns out that her mate, the Rachel's mate, which is Yaakov, is the one that we're really concerned about because that's all, that's the Yichud of Zohar Vanuk. But there's also another Yichud, which we're dropped into this right now because if we were uh, better students, we would have started off way back in the other volumes of the Tiv, which is not a bad idea, uh, to get into the, Shema, the Kriya Shema, what's going on in Kriya Shema, big, big item. That's where I started with Rabbi Memran. And then he took us right to the to the Amida. Now he went to the Amida, and I know some things about the Amida, not enough. And uh, we could be learning over there, but instead, uh, we came over here. And we're dropping in because we're doing this in the schos of your father's in the Shema. And once again, his name is, one more time. Moshe Chaim Ben Menachem. So he's Moshe Chaim Ben Menachem. Okay, so I tried to remember that. So in the schools of that, we started into into this. Now, surprises, surprises, it turns out that Nesias Kapayim, it's a really nice little bracha here, <laughs> as we're going to see, and uh, it has something to do with uh, the concept of Yavor. And uh, these are two areas that I did not learn with Rabbi Memra. I mean, it just, you know, maybe in passing, but there's a lot to learn, and not only that, but Let's say books like this, the Tiv, I have been through them multiple times. Either I started them and I recorded them, or I had a Chavrusa that went, that I went through, uh, which you probably don't know about, uh, a lot of this. And when you read it for the first time, it's, it's uh, just like the Rabbeinu HaKadosh is teaching us, that you go from the outside in. You can't possibly understand the detail of this if you can't, follow what's going on the outside of it. Those are the words that so we're talking about Leah now. We're talking about some different concepts about Leah, how we have to build up Leah. Now, in in just the introduction to Leah, not to get us all too confused, is, is that Leah, as we said before, is the parts of up above uh, above uh, Rachel. But uh, Leah, Rabbi Memran always says, not really a part now, why that is or how that is, and we're about to hear all of it. 
And looking at this, we're going to have to understand how Leia, Leia is built. Leia's location with that knot of the tefill in the back of your head is also the location of Das. So the Das of Zer Anpin and the, and the head of, of Leia seem to be in the same place. So now we're going to go through this. So we'll, read it on the, we'll read it on the top. And then we'll read the Tiv because the Tiv really repeats it. He says it again, but remember, you're, you're talking about the point of the pencil, and what you're trying to say is like this. I'm going to stand up on the Duchen, and I'm going to make this bracha. What am I accomplishing when I make this bracha? Now, there are, two, there are different ways of looking at this. One, as I mentioned to you the last time, is the Matbea bracha, and that is a big pill to swallow. To understand how the flow of energy comes when you make a bracha, that itself is a really big thing, and that's about as far as I got, and I've digressed from there. I, mean, I know I know what's going on approximately. So I have a kabana that way. But in here, we're going to see that there's much more. And so we're going to have to dissect Leia, and we're going to have to dissect other things to be able to see all those different qualities. So here we go. Uh, this is the Drashi Chazara Samida, so we understand what we're talking about. Sim Shalom, excuse me, Sim Shalom, oh, I can mention Sim, Sim Shalom, is the end of the regular brachos. And in that bracha, normally we say that is when the yichud of Zohar and Nuk takes place. All the rest is the preparation. But he's saying another thing here that we're going to get into, and that is the concept, there's a Leah here also. Well, what about Leah? So Leah has a yichud that apparently takes place in Yavor. Now, like I said, I don't know anything about Yavor, except that he said that. And I don't know much about this either. But that's where we're going. And some of it will get a little bit... Uh, Technical. So he says, Kolod based Devarim Inyan Nesias Kapayim of Birchus Kohanim. So the, the concept of the Nesias Kapayim, he's going to talk about that first. He says, it's Kolod Shnei Drashim. So there are two different Drashim here. Drash Inyan Mishmoel's Nesias Kapayim. So there's one where you have the, what is the implications of lifting up the hands? What does it accomplish? The Inyan Brach Birchus Kohanim. Then Kohanim. Then there's the Brach itself. So you have you have to see all those different parts. Is it b'bedchida devar tam nesias kapayim? So let's talk about the reason why we do nesias kapayim. Yam ki hu drosh katsur, and we could do this because it's short. That's the short part. Va'achar kach nachso devar drosh birchos kahanim become upon him. So we're going to go and see after that that what is actually happening as we try to explain. What the brachos actually do become upon him in many different ways. Shishimat Mimorizal, and this is the language of Chaim Vital that I heard, that I heard from the Rav, who is my master. So, as you probably know, that we refer to the Uri as the Rav. So over here we go to uh, just reading the light print on number Aleph. It says Bedrash Zeh Yis Ba'aro Shtei In Yonim. There are two things we're going to explain. Echa the Tam Al Pi Hasod. One is the reason, according to the secret, that the Kohanim have to lift up their hands. So why do they have to put, you have to bring it to the level of your head. Why is that? Why can't you do it around, you know, just... Uh, actually, I know a Kohen whose tradition was the Chassidish people, that he takes his hands out from underneath his kalos, and he does it that way. Now, don't there, so there are apparently many different versions of this. I'm not sure which is kosher, which not. So anyway, we don't do it that way, but we we uh, bring it up. It has to be brought. Your hands have to be brought up to the top of your head. And Rabbi Mimron insists that your hands need to be flat, uh, the tips of the fingers pointing out or pointing straight ahead. That's the way I he told me. So he says, should three. And the second one is a kavanas. So you have to have specific, specific kavanas. Now here you're talking when you talk about a kavana, you're talking about uh, our friend Nathan. Uh, he got me into buying these five millimeter pencils, very very sharp pencils, so that they break. You can't use it for rated writing, just for notes, like an accountant's pencil. And that's what it has to be. We have to learn how to zero in on what we're doing when we're saying the words. This is the whole idea. So he says, what's Sharikh and the Kohan and the Kavan? What are the Kavanos that we have to have? The Pesukin, the Brichos Kohanim, you have a Rechachan, and so on and so forth. All of them have different sides to them. Number Bet, I think we're on number Bet, or did we get to Bet? Yeah, there's a Bet in here somewhere. 
He said, So this is the first thing. We have to see why it is the Gohanim have to lift up their hands uh, when they make these brachos. He yoshuhu in yin concert. So since it's short, but then we're going to go into length. What actually are the kavonos that we're going to be saying when we're saying the words of the pesukim, the birchus kahanim, atzman. And there's a lot of different ways that we could look at this. So apparently, it's, I tell you, this is not my subject. I'm learning this just with you. Just, we'll learn it together. So the way the marchu hold is from the ari. Now we're going to number Gimel. So Yevoyer Shalakonim Nosis Nosim Kapehem. So they lift up their hands. Who Lutzorich Binyan Parts of Leah is for the purpose of building the parts of Leah. O Bina, the parts of Leah, and also the specific, specifically Leah is if she has a parts of has ten spheros. So you have to see that in all of these languages of the Rav, he could be talking about Bina or Chochma or any sphera. And understand they all have ten spheros within them. So there's a Malchus de Malchus and a, 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 and, and a uh, Gevurah de Malchus and a Chesed de Malchus and a Chochmah de Malchus. All the ten. They're all there. So he says we want to talk about parts of Leah, or Bina the parts of Leah, and specifically the Bina of parts of Leah, the Tzorach Zivug de, de Biavo. So that he's telling us right here. The whole thing has to do, you have to build up Leah because, and I, I'm telling you right now, I don't have a real good understanding of why we need to build up yet Leah, especially because the main Yichud is of during the weekday is between Yaakov and Rachel. Uh, and uh, that's really what you're looking for. So what is Leah coming into this, the picture here? So all of that has to be investigated. So it says Da. So now we're reading this Da. Ki inyin nesiyas kapayim. Well, the whole subject of lifting up the hand. Letzorach tikun parts of Leah. Kamoshin ivor. Like we're going to explain. The Indian who commotion consumed the air, it's like I said up above, the Sod Birchusim Shalom. Now, over there in Birchusim Shalom, as I said, that's where the ultimate Yichud takes place between Yaakov and Rachel. Uh, the defeat is Lachash, and that particularly takes place. He wants to say, there is a drush over there. We didn't learn it. We may have to go backwards someday. So we may have to go back into Kriya Shema, like I said, because I like the Tiv. It's better. I learned with Rabbi Mimram in the uh, Sefer called Nakudas of Kasif, which I'd like to be able to show you. If you can get on Zoom, uh, I can show you some of this stuff. But at any rate, so he says that in the Tefilas Alacha, she says, Ki zivugim na'asim atom, because there are two different zivugim that are taking place here. So now we could say that Zah sometimes is called Yisrael, sometimes he's called uh, Teferis or uh, or Yaakov. Beyud Gimel Midas the Rachamim. So what, let me read it again. I don't know anything about this. One of the Zivugim is between Zeranpin and Yisrael, who is Yisrael, with the 13 Midas of Rachamim Shel Yavor. Now Yavor is Hashem, Hashem, Kael, Racham, Vachanim, right? I don't know anything about it. He just said it. That's what it is. That's what's happening here. You have to fix up Leah in order to be able to have this Yichud that's going to take place. So that Yichud, he said, etc. Im Leah min So that's from the Chaza of Zer Anpin up above. There's going to be a Yichud that's going to take place between Zer Anpin, which is called Yisroel, and Leah. And this, the location, he says of this, which to me is very difficult to understand, is from the Chazal Amala. It's not from the whole, you know, the whole length of the backside of Zeranpin. It's only from the Chazal Amala. It's a, it's a phrase that has a meaning, but I'm not sure, not as sure, and I've seen it many times, that it's anything more than this. That's what it's called, and we have to figure out why. And of course, the second one is, a, is the other Yichud, Yaakov and Rachel, which also takes place when you actually fall on your fa- on your arm and uh, do that Tachnon. Now, now the Tiv is going to flush this out a little bit more for us because that's a good thing about reading the top verse. You know the words of the Rav. So it's very important to know that. 
Uh, Jakob Cronenberg, if you heard me say this in this year, he said that the Rav lived in Tzfat for approximately uh, two years. Uh, one year and a half he learned with uh, Chaim Vital. Uh, why? Because Chaim Vital was was the the, the Talmud Mufchak from from the uh, R- Rabbi Moshe Cordovero. He was the inheritor of everything that Rabbi Moshe the, the Ramak had. So why should he go? This guy comes up from Mitzrayim and he's living here. So you know, let him come to me. That was his idea. That's what Yaakov Cronenberg said. He said, but then eventually the, certain things happened, and he saw who the Rav was, and for the next year and a half. He learned with the Rav. Everything that you see here, he did. Uh, uh, you know, it's the Eitz Chaim, it's uh, it's uh, it's the Ultra Chaim, it's all the different Sfarim. All of this was produced in that year and a half. So just remember, try to re- think of who Chaim Vital is. The Rabbi, the Rav, is a person that you know. That story I tell uh, that somebody saw him sleeping when he was in the base medrash in Mitzrayim. And somebody saw him sleeping, and his lips were moving. So he, the person leaned his head down, head down, and uh, he tried to listen to what the Rav was saying because there was a, some kind of an aura around him. So as he was there, the Rav woke up, and he said, "What are you doing?" He said, "Well, I'm just trying to listen to what you're saying, Rabbi." So he he says, "If I was going to tell you what I was saying, it would take sixty years for me to tell it to you." Now I'm just saying that comparison is a relative idea. But the, uh, of the speed of the mind of the Rav, because he's hooked into Eliyahu and Navi and all this kind of stuff, Chaim Vital recorded it. Okay, Chaim Vital is like a person like you and me. That's that's what he's saying about himself. I listen to the Rav. I'm writing it down. So anyway, let's go on. Here we number Gimel light print. It says Anta Naskil Levayer Atam Shetzrichem or Kahanim Lisa Kapechem Keneged Rosh. Parts of Leah. It's for the purpose of building up Leah. And particularly the Chokhmah Bina Shalom. Now, if you think about your, your head, your head, and your head, you have this knot where the tefillin rise in the back of your neck. And that, as I say, is the top of, uh, of Rachel. But actually, it's really the Das of Rachel. So Rachel has, and I, I'm getting the wrong words, I'm getting sorry, Leah. It's the place of the Das of Zeranpin, which is the place of the Das of Leah. But there, if you want to think about where is their Chochmah, it's the right brain. You want to know where is Bina? It's the left brain. So you see that the knot is really below the brains. It's in the middle between the two sides. So he says, Leah as Sphere is a Chochmah of Bina Shalom. So what we want to do is, as Leah is going to explain, is basically at this point in the davening, now as you've gotten to the Birchus Kohanim, is she is from Das downward. That's Leah, all the way down. I don't know how far down she goes. Let's just say from where, whatever her length is, because I don't know for sure at this point, her length is, it has 10 spheros in it. But the only spheros that we're counting are eight of them. That's from Das going down to Malchus of, of Leah. So what we're trying to do is build the Chochmah and the Bina of Leah. So let's go to turn the page uh, number Lamed, right? And let's go over here and let's say good day, Levoyer Ha'inyan. So in order to explain what's going on here, Maknim Dehi the Masha Kos of the Ale would take what we said up above, a Drosha Kavona Samida, we're over there of the Shmona Ezra, which would be a nice place to go. Yachrei Tefila Samida, the Lachash, because after you finish the silent prayer, Na'asim Shnei Zivugin, there are two Yehudim that take place there. Harishon who zivug zer anpin and nikra Yisrael im Leah. The, the first one that takes place there is Yisrael. That's the whole zer anpin with Leah. And where does this take place? Lamala in the because that's the place of Leah. Kisham makom amidas Leah lamala in the because that's where she lives. V'naazah lifnei sha oimim hashlosh esrei midas shal rachamim. And this takes place. This con this this concept of making this yichud has to take place before you get to the Shlosh Midas of Rachman, Bechinas Vyavor, which is, now he's going to call it Vyavor. So there's some kind of a Yichud that takes place in Yavor, and this is necessary preliminary. Okay, number Hey, light print. Vazivig Hashani, who's Zivig Yaakov and Rachel. Now the second one is the is the Yichud that we're working for is Yaakov and Rachel. So the place where they are is from the chest downward. So, that particular yichud takes place 
when you fall on your face. The pasuk the davi alech Hashem nashi efsa betevis Hashem. So this is like one of the places just between you and me. This is that you know because I'm Ashkenaz. This is that this is a place where the Ashkenaz sitter difference differs uh, greatly from one of the places where it's different. different it's different from the Rav. Let's go on to number Vav. I think we have a number Vav. No, the Vav is in the next place. Okay, so what do we have here? We have the concept that we're going to, in this Birkas Kahanim, is built up the Chokmah and Bina of Leah. Leah is from the, as she is in the particular state, this has to take place, he says, before you get to Yavor. In other words, she has to be uh, more mature. She has to have a, and this is called, her. she has to have a Chub, which is Chokmah Bina. So she needs a hub. This is what's going to take place. This is what the Kohen's going to do. So Ata, okay, oh, wrong place. We're up and back up in the Rav again and with the introduction to the Tiv. The Tiv says, Yavor Shebebirchus Abos. Now that's Ashel Hashem, Elokeinu Be'elokei Abosainu, Elokei Avraham, Elokei Yitzchak, Ve'elu Yaakov. Now you don't have a Rosh Hashanah, because he spells it out there, but the word Elokei is really the name Leah. So he says over there, Yivar she bebirchos avnu av avos tiknu parts of kol rachel for kol das chagat no delay. So in those in at that time we are attempting to make a tikkun in the entire parts of of rachel. It's not made magically all at one time. V'chein das and then also these spheros of Leah, that is her das, her chesagavur to Ferris, which we would have called not chagat no and netzachan ho delay. I didn't mention. Uh, you sow. But he says that's the position that you're in right now. The position after, in other words, you're coming to Sim Shalom, there's going to be a Yichud, some kind of a Yichud there, and let's see what else he has to say. So he never, he, he never birchus abos and the brocha of, uh, elokein of elokei of Hussainu, like that. Naasa parts of Rachel. So this is the creation of the parts of, of the Nook, which is Rachel. Gam parts of Leah can nizker la'el, but not at the same time. It's also going to build up Leah. So he says, "Bemilas hakel hagadol hagibor v'hanara." Anyway, we build up Leah through those words. Shehem osios Leah, because if you look at the kale, the word hakel, hakel hagabor. Let's see, it was kale el. Anyway, I don't have the rishash that are in front of me. So, but at any rate, there are three kales, three hakels there. And that represents the parts of, of Leah, building her up in the same letters. Of all Oz, Lona Asa called parts of Leah, but at this time, and then during the Shemona Asra here, the entire parts of Leah is not built Kulo Kenizka Sham, which is mentioned over there. Kilo Naasa Oz Rak Bechinas Adas the Leah, so only it goes up to the level of the Das of Leah. Now he mentioned he didn't mention nai. He said chagat no, but uh, here he says the seven tachtonas of Leah, uh, the sheva tachtonas sheba that are in her, which would be chesagavur to Ferris netzachod yisod, and malchus the zat of Leah and the das of Leah are in construction and built during those hakels that we talked about. Uh, uh, so he says, "Aval atrin mochim chachmah bina sheba." But those the upper mochim, that is the her chachmah bina, which is also called chub, lo nisaknu below naasa gadayim. They're not built yet; they're not in place yet. The gam bechina si yisod sheba lo naasa gadayim. And still, he says, "Okay, I said I included it. He left it out. The yisod is not built yet either." Okay, so yeah. Yeah. All right. So I don't know. That's a good question. Now, he. Let me just see. Uh, let, we have the. Uh, what's the difference between male and female? Uh-huh. So the male is the mashpia he's giving so therefore when you're looking at it in terms of of uh, what the zat is doing which is basically the six the the vok of ziranpin is is flowing into malchus and then malchus is is being mashpia to the lower world 
That's what's going on. So in the other case, though, is, is that by the same token, it's female. What's female? Because the female is the receiver. So it's the pitcher and the catcher. So she, she, she receives. So in that way, you could, that could be an answer. So there she's, she's the Tachtonos. Those are the seven Tachtonos. The point here that he's making is that Yesod is not in the equation. It's only Chagat Na that it, it's the Das and the Chagat Na that are already built. The Yesod is not built yet. Now that's another, another possibility because Yesod is the Mashpia. It's the one that gives. So therefore, it's strictly on the receiving end. That's what it looks like to me. So let's go number, number Ches. So also, the, let's talk about the Yisod. Lo na'asa chadayin tikkuna is still not made yet. The na'asa rak b'shal sh'oimrim apasa v'yavor Hashem kodim nefilis apayim. So only before you start to say v'yavor, that's when it comes together, before you come to falling on your arm. V'rei shefa, so there's a shefa over here. We're not going to get into it. And that's the basic idea. So what's happening over here is is that in the Birchus Ava Birche Avos, you're building the Das and the Chagat Noah of Leah. But it stays in that position until you come around over to the end. And then over to the end with the Sias Kapayim, he's telling us that this is going to bring her the Chub. Chub is necessary. In other places, and I'm going to be going into it little by little in the uh, Otras Chaim, is going to see that Chochma, without Chochma, it's like a woman wants to be impregnated, but she don't, doesn't have a man. So she could be there, and she could be there a long time and do wonderful things, but she'll never give birth. But she needs a man, and a man is, is Chochmah. So as the development of Chochmah is, is developed, which we're going to be learning in the Otras Chaim a little bit, God willing, uh, we'll see that how Chochmah, the development of Chochmah, is important to reproduction. So now, so that's what basically what he's saying is, is that Leah can't reproduce or can't enter into Yichud unless she has a chachma with her. So now we're on number uh, test about spheres of chachma, but bina the Leah, the spheres of chachma and bina Leah, shehim hamochim shalo, which are her mochim, nisakni bebirchus kahanim ayedech and nisias kapehim. So this all takes place when the Kohen lifts up his hand. Uh, so this takes place the the construction of these two and that's why uh well let me just go on and not try to work my own thoughts in here so he says so that when you make this bracha there's a tremendous abundance of shefa and that shefa that comes as a result of the brachas that you make are bringing building up leah now so over here, you know, uh, in all of these things that we learn in the Rav are all different kinds of uh, narratives, of stories, of this came before that and then came before this, and this is part of it. So he says like this, I think we're on number Gimel. Uh, did we read it? Oh, I didn't read it. Uh, Reboy, or I didn't read number Gimel. Okay, let's go. So what we're explaining here. So now we come to the concept of two different kinds of oros. There's an ormakif, which is very powerful, and a more orpanimi, which is less. So because the the, the, the makifim is going to go into detail now, you're going to, have to learn a concept here uh, that you maybe haven't had yet. This causes the in, the introduction of the ma'kipim causes their anpin to have a tremendous amount of light within him. And then what happens is heim nosim as kapehim the kohanim come and lift up their hands. The remosha osa ha'aro osha osam ha'aros hanitais v'za. It's it's a a hint, a remez to the to the thought that those Lights, which are the makifim, were now being added into into zeranpin. Hanim shachim, hanim shachos, the yotzes misofe its bows. And where does it actually come from? It comes from the tips of his fingers. Shall yadav of his hands. Shalol yardu lamata that never never went down. They don't go down. 
Amnam Yatsim Bisham via Alabasod or Chosen. So let's say like this you have now your fingers, your hands, opposite your head. And uh, the light, now if we had this concept before, is that he's understanding the sod of your body, is that the light from the Ains of Baruch Hu was permeating from the top to the bottom of your, uh, of your body, just like the mulking, your nerve, your nervous system, or your blood system, or, or whatever, not the blood system, but let's just call it a nervous system, but it's full of light. And the light travels down your arm, which is, a lot of times they call it your hand, because it's basically, the hand is the eager part of the arm in a lot of ways, until it reaches the fingertips. And in the Otsvos Chaim, he talks about the fact why we keep our fingernails cut as much as possible, because at the place that the finger the fingertip ends, there is a certain amount of or kedusha that comes out of there. And as a result of that, the klipos like the like the, that's that's a place that draws the klipos. Now here, that where is the place? Well, your hands normally are down around your hips. That's where they're at. It's all drush over there about how the light comes from the, the tips of your fingers and goes into your legs, goes down to the bottom, to malchus, it's a whole flow. So the idea of this flow is very important, which is one of the reasons, I don't know whether it's my reason or what, I just can't stand Ashkenaz when they hold their hands behind the back while they pray, because that's really bringing all the, 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 the juice into your tush, which is the wrong place. There's a reason I think I'm trying to understand it because it seems so foreign to me, but this is very popular. Especially among Hasidim and people from Hasidim backgrounds, it's 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 like a, a European style of some sort. That's what best best I got. I'm not yatsa misham via alavisod or chosis. So let's go back to this idea. So now you have your fingers, you have tips of your fingers, you have the light of the ein sof coming through your fingers. So now you're lifting up your hands and you're putting it opposite your head. And then we can read this line once more. Uh, once more. Second to last line, it be a sec left on the line up above. It says Shalo Yardu Lamat. But now, when, when you're doing a CSF the time, you, you, you're bringing it to the level of the, the Nikve Anaim, or are you going up to the, the Metzach? Where are you exactly? No, he's telling. He's telling you. You got to listen. So I figure. I figure it's up to the level of your head. Now you know that the level of the neck is where the das of Zeranpin is located. And that, yeah, the das of Zeranpin, and also the das of Leah. They're located that place. But we want to build up above that. So that means we have to be mamish opposite the head. It doesn't say, it doesn't say specifically opposite your eyes or your ears. It doesn't say that. But you can re re uh, re recognize it yourself uh, in some way. So let's see what else he says. But his point over here is, is that normally the light that comes out of your fingers uh, is going downwards because your arms are down. Shalom yardu lamato. But here, in this case, when you bring your hands up, this concept, and this is a kabona, that you're standing and you're going to get the duchen and you're going to make this benching. So, your kabona is, is that the light's not going to go down from here. In other words, you have your fingers pointed out straight. They could bend downwards. But no, it doesn't. It goes upwards. Amnam yantzach b'sham via alabasod or choser. This is called or choser. Straight light that goes from the top to the bottom is called or yashar, and the light that goes the other way from the bottom to the top is called or choser. Makes sense. It's returning light. A mimata lamala ad reisha de zeranpin, and it goes from the bottom to the top until it reaches the head of zeranpin. But so zekiva says bows klapim ala, which is the concept of lifting up the fingers towards upward. He doesn't say you're actually mamish lifting up your fingers. It's said to say that the shefa that's coming out of your fingers, this is your kavana. So now you came over and let's, so that, let's say that you had an idea about what to do with the bracha itself. And now you've gotten to the point where you're starting to say the words, of the bracha, I mean bracha to Hashem, that part. You're actually saying the words of the, uh, uh, of the birchas kohanim themselves. Your, your kabbana is, is that you're saying these words and they, they are causing the light from the fingers to go upwards into the head of, our, of Leah. This is how we fix up the chachma bina of Leah. And let's go over here and let's see, uh, where did it start? Number Yud? Number Yud. He said, "V'gatam shes sfiras ha'chokma v'bedina the leya ain yecholim lehistakim." What's the reason why they're only able to be rebuilt or built 
Rock al ad birchos kahanim only until you get that point. Why did they not were not built? Ki oz nasim boris oros a makifim because now in birchos kahanim what you're doing is you're bringing the makifim in. What are the makifim? They are the lamed memet selim the abba. Now so we haven't discussed the lamed memet selim. We haven't discussed the selim. So the concept of selim. Remember I told you that there's this concept called. Um, Called summer. So one of those things that go reading for the light is Kalim, Levushim, and the next one is Slomim. There are different kinds of clothing of light. And there are two different kinds. He's going to explain it, I think. The, the, the Tzalim, the Tzadi, the Tzalim is the lowest part of this wrapping. It is, it's actually layered one on top of the next. They come from Bina. It's a kind of wrapping that comes from Bina. It's called the Tzalim. The Tzadi the Tzalim is a light that is digestible by Zeranpen. And as a result of that, it goes into Zeranpen and it changes Zeranpen and it brings him Mokhin the godless. But there's two other lights, the light of the, of the Lamed, which would say would be the middle part, and there's the light of the Mem, which is a, uh, a higher part. So the, middle, the Lamed and the Mem represent the Makifi. So in the uh, Otsus Chaim, he explains that the Makif of the Lamed it's a concept that the light really penetrates their anpin, but it's too great for their anpin, so it goes back out and surrounds their anpin. That's what a makif means. But the but the mem of the tzal is much more powerful. It can't come close to their anpin. If not, their anpin would disappear. So that's the power of these lights. So these are now now coming towards their anpin, and originally where he had the tzad the tzalim, now in birchus kohanim. Apparently, the Lamed and the Mem begin to start shining very strongly at this point. Now, the idea is this, that Zer Anpin, in his position, he's the Vav of Yudke Vavke, is below, from the, his real position is from the Chaz Lamata. From the Chaz Lamata is a place where there's Klipos. So, this is a dangerous place, and so Zer Anpin is subject to being attacked and falling apart. Uh, you're still there, right? Okay, no, because I've had trouble with it for earlier this year with, with the phone cutting out. I think it's the other person's phone, but... Okay, so I just thought I had that sound. So he says, so the Tzadi the Tzalim is able to go, and the Lama the Mel, the, of the Mem the Tzalim, they actually come into play in this bracha, in the bracha of Birchus Kohanim. So he says, so let's read a little bit more. So he said, what was it? If you can find the phrase, Ki oz nasim bo oras amakifi, the Lamed Mem de Salem de Abba. Now there is a Tzalem of Abba and there's a Tzalem of Ima. This all has to be discussed and we'll go it. And this causes the lights inside of Zer Anpin to become multiplied. So now where is Yud Aleph? We're still going on Yud Aleph. So therefore, What do you do when you lift up your, your arms? Now, there's another concept which I was trying to get at, but I didn't. The level of the head, the klipas are very weak. As a matter of fact, they're 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 almost func functionless at the level of the head. Where they're where they're stronger is at the bottom, obviously by the feet. As a malchus gets the most trouble. So this is a lot to do because you know I'm, I have a background as a psychologist, so therefore I'm always thinking about marital relationships and what this actually means because women represent malchus. That means a malchus, the women are always exposed to the worst. But at the same time, they protect Zeranpin. That's really what they do. I saw this beautiful phrase the other day. It says, a, room, a, a woman, a wife, I think he meant, is the coast bracha of her husband. So, one, <laughs> as difficult as your wife, let's say, may be because people are opposites and it's hard to get along. But by the same token, uh, they're very protective and they do all kinds. They, they are the coast of the bracha for the man. Okay, anyway, I thought that was a nice boy. Because now he says they're actually coming into Zer Anpin. The person then that Cohen has to live up his, ha his hands, the base Sivos, for two different reasons. One, Shalo Yanku Meham So I, as I was explaining, Ki Derech Haoros, the red is the Mata, because the normal way of the, uh, uh, of the lights that come out through the tips of the fingers are going downward. Derek Sofed's bowels, so you dime. They come out through the ends of the fingers of the hand. 
Miyad Yamim. So he's doing a great job. Miyad Yamim, he connected the sphere of Chesed, the sphere of Netzach. So the right hand is really the connection between Chesed, which is represented by the arm, and Netzach, which is the right leg. So that's the way it normally goes. The flow wants to go through the whole body of Zer Anpin, and as a result of that, it's going downwards all the time. Miyad small. Shuhu connected Sphere with Gavura, so that's where the left arm would be. The Sphere is Ahod is going to go down to the left leg. Okay, now Zam Agvia Yadav Laremis. So therefore, Za lifts up his hand, and it's a hint, Shalo Yardu Hashef of the Mata, that the Shef should not go downwards, that's not going to go that way. The Yankub and Benachitzani, because that's <coughs> where the Chitzanim are the most powerful. That's where the Nook is located, that's where the power is. The second reason, is because of the fact that he lifts up his hand like that. So now, if you understand where your right brain is and your left brain is, you're going to be putting your hands on the sides of those two brains. And this actually reflects the, uh, this with Leia. Now, let me just see. Uh, we're running out of time now. Um, I would. I was really trying to hope to start. I don't know. I have to eat in here, so I haven't even figured out a schedule how to get myself so I can stay healthy. Uh, it would rather start at eight. Then I could learn from eight to nine if you're up to, up to it. So if you get Zoom, we could try that. But I remember learning with you before. You have a terrific imagination. See, some people don't. So I've been around a little bit. Some people have to have uh, a drawing. Because they're more intellectual than than uh, imaginative, you know what I mean. So therefore, I started doing drawings. It ter- turns out that actually it is helpful to me too, because there's some concepts that are too hard for me. And that's why I like Zoom, but I'm not sure that Zoom works as well for me, uh, like in trying to print it, print it, and publish it, because this little works out real good what I'm doing right now. Okay, this is going to be the last one we're going to do today. Uh, let me see. We're going to maybe only read the top. How far does it go? Okay, we'll see. So the next one is, now we have a concept. Now, what's, what, what are you doing? When you're lifting up your hands, you're bringing, you're doing two things. One is you're bringing in the makifi. And these are powerful lights and they send the klipas away. And on the other hand, you're bringing them up to the layer of the head, which is a difficult place for the klipas to be all together. And as a result of that, the light that's coming out of your fingers, this is your kavana. Your kavana is those th- things, and that the light is actually going upwards that's coming out of your fingers, going the opposite way than normal. That's what we heard over here. The next one is, Yavarsha Kohen Sark L'Hagvir Yadav K'Neged Rosho Mamash V'Atam L'Zeh. Why does the coin have to lift his, ha- his hands up Mamash after his head, up to his head? Bezeh so Tam Shetzarech HaKohen L'Sakapov. So this comes to the idea why does the coin have to lift up his hands in the first place? Keneged Rosho, then he says, excuse me, Keneged Rosho Mamish, Lamala Kanizka Bemishna, like it has to be, the Mishnah says it. But Sarkli Zohar Bezeh, Lahagvim Mamish, Keneged Rosho. So they have to have this idea, it can't be down below, it has to be up above, and he gave reasons before. So now he goes on, the Inyan Zen Yisbar Bedrosh, Bedrosh, Shen Yisbar Etzlender Bedrosh, Tikun Parts of Leia, Ech Nisake. So all of this is part of a drush. Well, we'll talk about how Leah, the parts of Leah, is is built. Understand that parts of means a a a, a system of ten spheros, which the purpose of them is his matas of the light, because the light of the Ein Sof is the light of nothingness. Nothing would exist in its presence, so therefore it's clothed continuously all the way down. So there it says that the lights that come out for the ends of a person's arms is their anpin. There are kits voice its bowls through the tips of the fingers. Nivna parts of Leia, that this is the parts of Leia, how she is built. She's built mitata la ela, besod or choser la ayin sham. Now understand, uh, Leia is built from a light that goes backward. Okay, it's not a downwards light, which is a normal progression. Uh, which is very interesting because in other places you'll see that the concept of the nook is that concept itself. The concept of the nook is the concept of emptiness that is searching to go upwards to find find shefa, to find brach, which is the concept of the need for zivug, which is why they're saying, they're saying that really the real urge to yichud is really coming from the nook. 
if if the Zah is paying attention, then he can harmonize with it. That's a, just the whole idea, again, from the psychological point of view that I talk about now. Because the nook is empty, feels it. And so therefore, it's going, this is, and Leah is a nook. So therefore, it's going from the bottom to the top, or Choser V'ayin Sham. Now, I know I edited on that, and I put in my own ideas, and we'll see if they pan out. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're going to finish up now. We're on page Lamed Gimel, and we're on the word Ubezeh. Ubezeh HaMavur Atam Al Piyaso. Now we're explaining this according to the Sot. Shatzrik and the Kahanim Lisa Kapech and the Malak and Negev Rosham. They have to lift up their hands above, opposite their heads. Kanizka B'Mishnah is mentioned there. L'Ramaz and L'Ramaz, and to give us a hint, Ki Atem Agvir Hazah as Yadav Kanegev Rosham, because this is the time when Zer Anpin will lift up his hands. So either... I would say either you're you're actually stimulating, as we represent relative to Zeranpin Malchus. So either you're stimulating Zeranpin to do that, or actually you're trying to harmonize with Zeranpin who is doing this. The Sakin is a mochan the chokva bebina the leya, and the reason why he's lifting up his hands is because he wants to build up the chokva bebina leya. Shesham hu makom amidas and ma'achra, because this is the way place that they stand in his back. So therefore, if that's what's going on, and Zer Anpin is lifting up his hands in order to be able to bring that Shefa up into uh, the Chok Mabina of Leah and build that, so he says that so we have to be careful about that too. It's not enough that you just bring them up above your shoulder. Okay, which is the place of the Das? So in other words, it's the neck area. Now, it doesn't say on top of that. I know what you said about is it the matzah is the eyes. It doesn't say. He says it has to be up in the area of the head. As the mamash, the ray of the shefa. So then come over furthermore and see the shefa. Well, we're not going to do that. So let's number yud gimel. So the, the he says what? Let's talk about this. How you build your mesake in the spheres of Chachma, Babina, the Leia, this Boyer, the Eitzchaim. So he's going to quote, I think, the Eitzchaim over here. And he's going to say, Where are you? Adrush Yaakov Aleah. So there's a, in the Eitzchaim, there's a, uh, uh, a shar, which is called Yaakov Aleah. Bechain Shom, this Boyer, the Rechels, called Seder Tiku, the Binyan Leah. Over there, it talks about in, in depth all of the construction of Leah. The Rey Od Shefa. So that again, once again, there's more he has down in the Shefa. Uh, the Shamnis Boyer, what does it say over there? Ki Tikun Sphiris Achachva Babinda the Leia, who Bizman Shazer Anpin Magiv Yadav Lamala Bamakam Rosha. So if you can get, uh, again, uh, just interpreting his words, he says that uh, Shazer Anpin is Magvia his hand. So that means that since he's doing it, we do it, or does it mean that because we do it, he does it? And I think it's the latter. Lamala Bamakam Rosha, this is the time for that to happen. Az yotzim oros mesofa is roos. Then the 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 lights come out from the fingertips. There are kitzvos as balls at the end of the fingers. Besot or choser with a light that's going upwards instead of downwards. The nidne mechem spheros chokma bebinda the leah, and as a result of that, it builds the spheros of the chokma bebinda the leah. So mina perak atachdon the yad yamim. So let's talk about the 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 lowest part, the low part of the right hand. Nivnis Sphiris Achachma Delay. Now notice that he said, just for your edification, he said, Now, the normally they interplay the word arm and hand to mean the same thing. Because in the hand, you have the lowest, the lowest parak is the, is the hand, the wrist and the hand. Then it goes to the elbow and then it goes to the shoulder. So those are three possible different places that contain light or different levels of light. So at any rate, I just want to point that out that he changed his language and he's instead of calling the tips of the fingers, he called it the paraktakton, the yad yamim. But this is what he wants to say. From that, that right hand builds the spheris chachmadaleah because now that you're up above the head area, you're definitely not in the neck anymore, you're in the head area and the light is going up to the brain. Amina paraktakton, the yad small and from the lower parak of the yad small, Nibnis spheris bina delay. Umasha kosev and rabzal b'lashon the parts of Leia. We talked about parts of Leia. The mashba called the parts of its mashba that he's building all of the parts. This is a little side from the tip. 
Ulai yesh lomer came into her chokma vabina hima eker shehima mochen the parts of Leia since he wants to say that the language is not the entire parts of Leia yet. I think that's what he means. But in fact, the reeker of the parts of itself is chokma and bina. So he said neke the rabzal lushen klali. So there he speaks it in a general way. Parts of Leia afal pishe misakni achshav rach spheres chokma bina the still the kaser and he sowed that are not made yet. Maybe also Malchus, I'm not sure. Yeah, because this is the Chagat Naw, is what he said. Number Tesvav. Okay, that's for tomorrow. Thanks for learning with me today. I really got a lot out of this. I hope you did. Absolutely. Thanks yeah, so you're great. You're great. Thank you. It's called Tuf.